Hi, it's Glenda again with Glenda's Creative Place dot blogspot dot com, and today I am going to show you my very very favorite feature of the Ultimate Crafters Companion Tool, which is this big lavender looking tool that does ten amazing things. But today I'm going to focus on what is and has been my very favorite part of this tool. And that is the ability to make not just envelopes, but big envelopes that have depth. So that when I make a beautiful multi-layered card, I can actually have an envelope that is deep enough to accommodate that. So I don't have to squish my card into a tiny, tiny little regular envelope. Therefore, squishing it all up. I mean, why do you want to do all that work and then squish it into an envelope to which it doesn't fit? So, that's what I'm going to show you today. It's called the Envelope Box. Okay, so here we go. I just first want to apologize up front for my horrible looking band-aids on my fingers. Um, I had a little fight with my tape dispenser this morning when I was packing up uh, shipments for some of you. And obviously, the tape dispenser okay. one. Back to Envelo boxes, which is what this is called. That's what we're going to be making today. And you'll see that within the instructions, the booklet alone has perfect instructions for it, and they tell you all about the sizes. Plus, in the DVD that comes with it, it also has a great set of instructions. So, let's get started. The first thing I want to tell you is that one of the things I really like is that I can make all different sizes of envelope boxes, the same sizes that I can make for regular envelopes. All I do is just do a little bit different procedure. Today I'm going to make an A2 envelope, which is the most common size of card and envelope out there today in the United States. And here's what we're going to do to start. As you can see in the directions, if we're going to do an A2, we need an 8 and a fourth square card stock to start with, or paper. Now, I want you to always remember that when you're making any envelope, you do need to start with a square. That's what makes the envelope work really, really well. Okay? There are some exceptions to that, but pretty much it's a rule of thumb that you want to use the um, square. Okay, so here we go. First thing I do before I like to score anything at all is I like to take my handy dandy little dryer sheet and I just store it in one of the parts in here inside my Ultimate Crafters Companion and I rub it along there. And the reason I do that is it just makes your embossing tools glide along much easier. Other people say use wax. Or some people say use soap. I don't know how you would ever do that and get that out. I guess I don't know. Uh, I'm not familiar with that myself, but I know a lot of people say that. So, for me, I just love the dryer sheet because it's handy. I always have one on hand, and plus, whew, makes the cardstock smell nice on top of it all. All righty. Are we ready to go? Now, depending on what side you want to show is how you're going to position this. And let me show you real quick what I mean. All right. Here is a good old piece of die cuts with a view, textured paper that has a white core. And let's just, for a second here, make a little score line. And this has not, this is not what we're doing for the project. I just want to show you the difference, all right? So we've got a little score line there, and this is the main textured side, okay? So that is how it's going to appear if you use it on the main textured side. If you turn it over, and score, then your score line will be more prominent on the textured side, which is what I want for this. So I have this little fashioned piece of paper here, and I'm going to turn it over. This is the non-textured side, okay? Non-textured side. Okay, so the first thing you want to pay attention to when making these envelope boxes is you need to make sure that you understand the priority is that the reason you can make the depth is that you have two different ridges here. This ridge on the bottom is what you normally use just for regular good old everyday envelopes. But this ridge up here is where you start 
And that is what makes the magic of the Envelo box. So take your cardstock and line it up here into that corner. The very top, butt it up against there. Make sure your cardstock is also butted up against here. And then take a peek at your instructions again. And what did they say for the A2 card? They said D and F. Okay. So what we're going to look at is D. And here is D right here. So we're going to start over here. Don't try and start. Don't try and start on the other side. This makes it really tough, actually, to try to start on the other side. So give it a start here. Put your embossing tool in. Don't do it too hard. You have to just kind of get a feel for how you how deep you like it. And of course, different paper also reacts differently. But I always try to start light, then I don't rip the paper. Okay, now what you're going to do is you're just going to drop this down. You see how we were all butted up against that? Now drop it down. Make sure your cardstock is sitting exactly in that next triangle. And score the same line again. And you remember that that was D. And here is D. So we are going to score D again while holding the cardstock firmly in place. And there we go. Okay? So, what I like to do when I get these done is I give them a little, what I call a little rock and roll. I like to give them a little rock and a little roll just to make sure that they're where I want them. I don't have to get too violent with it. Alright? Now, as you can see, we already have created something that will give us depth. Okay? So you're getting the idea, right? Now we're going to flip it around 180 degrees degrees and we're going to do the same thing. So for opposite corners we're going to do the same thing. So here we go. D again and we'll butt it up against the whole top ridge all the way across. Okay and now we're going to drop it down into the bottom channel and make sure we're all butted up here on the bottom channel all the way around and we're going to go into D again. Oops. Sometimes you can get a little too slippery. There we go. All right. And I give it a little rock. And a little roll. You guys have getting an idea, right? This is such a great thing. I mean, I don't know why anybody makes a beautiful card and then shoves it into an envelope that turns out to look pretty hideous by the time you get it all shoved together. All right. The next thing we're going to do is... Turn it around now 90 degrees and remember the A2 envelope. First we started with D and now we have F. So now we're going to start in line F, which is right so we're in the top channel again. Couldn't be simpler. Okay. And make sure you intersect the line over here because that's going to be important. All right. We did that. Drop it down real quick. Make sure you're exactly butted up against again, because otherwise it'll make it a little off kilter. So you want to make sure you're you're in here correctly and you've got it lined up against the sides. All right, boom. Okay. And once again, we're going to just take this last side, which is 180 degrees from the side we just did, and 90 degrees from the others. And we're going to once again do F. And here's our F starts here. I always like to kind of just give myself a little starting point before I take off. Because sometimes these are a little bit slippery simply because of my dryer sheet. And I can take off into eternity if I'm not careful. Okay, that one's done. Drop it down. All right. And make sure I've got it right here exactly where I want it. Okay. That's really important if you want these to come out even, Steve, and all the way around. All right. Kind of hold your hand right there. Okay. Here we go. There's the last one. Boom. All right. So now what I want you to do, if you haven't done it all the way around, is give them a little rock, give a little roll. Which is what I'm doing now, what you see on the other side is you see all of the score lines all over the place. We've got score lines, score lines, score lines. So really what you have is two, four, six, eight sets of score lines. Okay? Now, let me show you what we're going to do next.